and get out of here, NVIDIA. You're no yeah. longer a graphics company. Yeah, apparently. What does that even mean? I mean I'll they, tell you. have been trending this direction for a long time. According to NVIDIA Vice President of Corporate Marketing, Greg Estes, speaking to reporter uh, Stephen Witt, the decision to pivot to AI happened incredibly quickly, shortly after the rise of ChatGPT. CEO Jensen Huang sent out an email one Friday evening saying, everything is going to deep learning and we are, we're no longer a graphics company. By Monday morning, we were an AI company. Literally, it was that fast, which is obviously complete bullshit. <laughs> NVIDIA has been moving towards <laughs> GPU compute. Um, Just everything changed. Yeah. Everything. We woke up and we were like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah. The uh, air even feels different in here. It's remarkable that you got blindsided by this because <laughs> the rest of us have been talking about it for years. <laughs> um, but hey. Oh, man. It's cool that you guys finally said the quiet part out loud. Uh, yeah. Uh, that was wh how uh, Wit referred to Estes's statement. Around the same time, NVIDIA's leading AI researcher, who I assume they hired uh, right when they made this decision... Because why would they have an AI researcher if they were a graphics company before? So they just they they pivoted so fast. Um, Brian Catanzaro said that uh, Huang approached him and told him, "quote To imagine he'd marched all eight thousand of Nvidia's employees into the parking lot. Then he told me I was free to select anyone from the parking lot to join my team." That's so wildly over dramatic. Yeah, that's like not actually how that works anyway. That's like Bollywood <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> and then it turns into a giant dance number. Yeah. And then, like, some Jeep comes, like, flying over. The <laughs> Somebody's riding on the hood. Like, yeah, let's go. I'm the one that's going to be selected. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> what does this mean for desktop graphics? Did you and I make the switch to Team Red just in time to not have a choice anymore? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I suspect they'll still make GPUs. Why bother? Yeah, keep the fabs. Not or else. everybody stays in the consumer space. I mean, okay, obviously, this is a much, much smaller scale example, but I think consumers in general, particularly enthusiasts, tend to overestimate their own importance. I think they tend to overestimate yeah. the size and strength of the enthusiast market. And obviously gaming has grown a lot, but I think to consumers, DFI, for example, died you know, 15 years ago or 10 years ago or whenever, whenever, they, whenever they stopped making Sad day. motherboards. I like DFI. Except for one small detail. They never stopped making motherboards. DFI still exists today. Every once in a while, I will walk past the DFI booth at a trade show and be like, oh yeah, Diamond Flower International. Sorry, excuse me. Design for Innovation. That was a, that was a retcon back in the day. Um, yeah, I, oh, IBM. Yeah, IBM is a great example. They even pulled out their like sub-brand. That, yeah. That they got rid of Lenovo. Yep. See you later. And so, why not? Why why doesn't NVIDIA just go, eh, AI is the future. Why don't we just buy every possible wafer and turn it into AI accelerators? Just because it into, it's probably worth more than gold. And just know. be the entire AI future of the entire planet <laughs> and uh, let AMD and Intel fight over like these like... Tiny scraps whiny that are you all the time. Gamers, yeah. Yeah. Like, bow to their, you know, complaining about your prices. They complain about your, your product. They complain about everything, you know? And, and to be clear, I'm not saying the complaints aren't valid. I'm just saying that it's a lot less challenging from a day-to-day -day standpoint, not from an engineering standpoint, but from a day-to-day -day standpoint, having just a handful of customers that you can engage with meaningfully one-on-one -on -one who have big money compared to having a whole bunch of customers that are going to, that are going to hate you no matter what you do, no matter how good of a deal you give them. 
I don't think that that last part is necessarily true, but I could see how NVIDIA might kind of perceive it that way these days. You know, from their point of view, Moore's Law is dead and you should accept it and we're giving you the best we can deal with it. Um, you know, I'm sorry you're mad, essentially, right? Yeah. Um, but it's not like we didn't like them when we felt like we were, you know, getting a lot from them. But, you know, really, it's not that we're not still getting stuff. It's just that we're not getting what we're accustomed to. And that's really, that's really challenging. Um, that makes us feel, you know, not, not taken seriously. And I, I guess, yeah, I don't think, I don't think NVIDIA does take the gaming market nearly as seriously as it used to. And I think you can see that evidenced in the way that NVIDIA talks about it. Um, yeah, it sucks. Because it's not like I don't like the products, right? I mean, Z Biggie says, what's the percentage of their business that's graphics? Microsoft has about 8% of their revenue from Xbox, so if they keep a division that's 8%, why wouldn't NVIDIA keep graphics? I'm, I, look, it's possible, yeah, that they'll keep graphics forever, and they'll, and they'll you know, eventually turn into kind of a, you know, a, a scrappy subdivision or whatever the case may be. I don't think you can do that comparison either, though, but, because we're talking fab capacity. Well, not just not it's not just fab capacity. It's also just the um, I don't know. It's almost just like the will. <clears throat> it's like the it's like the 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 interest. You know, I I, I haven't I, I haven't spent a ton of time talking to Jensen. I've only met him I think a couple times. Um, but from you know interviews, from watching him talk, um, from those handful of interactions, you know he, he's a super passionate guy. I'm sure every story I've heard about him, he's super super passionate. Um, I've heard him I've heard him described as the kind of boss where he can be hyper assertive and swoop in and act like he can do your job better than you can, and what makes you most infuriated is the fact that he fucking can and it's like okay well what do i do now because i've been you know like like I, i've heard him described that way i've also heard him described in other less favorable ways but the point is everything aligns with this perception that he's extremely passionate and he's clearly passionate about ai now um and their leadership very much flows from the top down yeah and so you know what yeah maybe maybe gaming you know does continue to get some attention over there but maybe it doesn't because remember too it's not just about what percentage of your overall business it is sometimes it's about what looks better to your shareholders and gaming margins are pretty crappy compared to workstation margins compared to enterprise margins um and you know what yeah they they might they might like the volume um, you know, that, that might ultimately result in, in bigger volume discounts for their real products that they make margin on when they're booking with a, you know, a TSMC or who knows, someday maybe Intel's, you know, fab, uh, fab business or something like that. But I don't, I just, all I'm saying is I don't think it's a guarantee. Yeah. CEOs are infinitely replaceable. I don't get the focus on them, says Siginth. That's super that's actually like super not true think about it this way i think we can all agree that a bad ceo can destroy a company qed that was it yep that's it that whole argument obliterated um 